Hey gang, not sure what your appetite is to uh, kind of do a little recap here, but we're, we're looking at the last Blitzkrieg. Uh, it's from Multiman Publishing. And I've just gone through a couple of uh, activations here and I wanted to share, not sure what I want to share here. So that could be, could be your first clue. You might want to tune out. I wanted to give you an impression, I, I think, of how the the game flows. And once I do a few more of these activations here, I'll then start doing some detailed video on exact process, the uh, how to conduct the different types of combat, and all the rest of it. And the main reason for me not doing it right now is that I'm still not 100% comfortable with all of the concepts. And I would be fearful that as I'm explaining them, it's not that I would get the actual concept wrong, it's that I'd use the wrong name. <laughs> when I was playing earlier today on Vassal with uh, Lynn, one of the guys who was a play tester, he's been uh, kind enough to kind of walk me through the game a little bit. So anything you're seeing me do here is uh, totally a function of learning from him. But uh, he, so the, I kept using the wrong uh, vernacular, the wrong terminology for the uh, specific execution against a, a, a certain type of action, right? So um, I thought what I'd do is share with you the initial opening moves and what's happened. The first thing that I did in this game here was activate uh, the 12th, uh, oh, whoops, 12th Fox Grenadier, these guys here. And they basically started their turn in and around this area that you can't see, in and around here, basically along the west wall area. And there's one, for, there's one unit that's a calf uh, group size force that I'm going to very carefully pick up from over here and it's a uh, calf group holes and he's the only combat unit that has any real kicking power in in the 12th false grenadier as you can see now I haven't explained what all the little bits and pieces mean so you don't know what this this particular unit is <coughs> uh, and I'm not sure that I wanted to try, I want to try and explain it necessarily right now. But suffice to say that this is an armor factored unit that is also, uh, it's, it's dual powered, it's uh, tactically enabled as well. And that means that it has, let me see if I can pull this little chart here out from underneath the plex. And show you. It means that it has it has an assault capability. See that arrow there, and you'll see that uh, there are other types of units with it. Uh, red armor values, a range, uh, an action rating, and a movement rate, and all that sort of stuff. In fact, there's holes right there. Right. So what we did with this chap. Uh, when we initially, when we act, when we first activated, we <coughs> there was a, a an allied unit here. We wanted to knock that unit out of the crossroads here because they're vital to allow us to progress this way to achieve our objectives, which is capturing specific locations. We, you've got to capture Melmady and Stavalot and Saint Vith and some other places. And along the way, if you capture some other, other locations, that's good stuff as well, like this this hex here, Krink Kelt. But first of all, you gotta get through here. So we uh, only had one objective chip. And if you've read my posts on the blog about objective chits and how objective chits are related uh, uh, relatively directly or potentially tangentially, I guess, to the headquarters of combat trains, uh, i.e. logistics, that you, you've got to place these things in a location that, that pretty much that your forces can get to so that you can, because uh, they're the only things you're allowed to attack as, are these objective hexes, and the two hexes adjacent form an objective zone, and you're allowed to attack around those zones. Well, I only had one objective chip, 
because I rolled poorly on my planning and organization and logistical logistical chart. Uh, it's called the snafu table. And so I only got one to start with. So with one, I put it here, managed to force a retreat by this unit. And we, we uh, as the allies, we elected to retreat into here. And although that drops our support because we're in a marsh, and we'll talk about support later as well. There's lots of new concepts in here, and I can't really explain very much to you unless I... I can't explain very much to you about what happened without ref referring to some of these concepts, even though you may not understand them. So we bounced the unit out of here, which allowed us then, uh, because of the uh, sequence of actions, that the unit ended its turn here. And that unit then, uh, then other units uh, moved up, and we finished our activation. We rolled to see if we could activate a second time, and we were successful. And this time when we activated, we got two objective chits, and we were able to place them in two locations, or you can put two in one location and gain a, a benefit. Well, I put one here, and I put one up here in this township where the 99th Infantry Command was. And then, uh, since this had no uh, AV zone of control because it had this uh, its support temporarily suspended, and because this uh, this is a red armored unit, it can ignore basically infantry style uh, infantry style zones of control. We could pass through this zone of control, drive up to here, drive into the hex that is the uh, enemy. 99th Infantry US Headquarters, and we can uh, capture that hex and force the HQ to do what they call a bounce. And the only reason we put an objective ch hex here, uh, chit here is because you have to put ob uh, objective chits against VP hexes, and this is a VP hex. So I moved up to here, and I captured, I captured the town, forced the infantry to retreat, and by doing so, I'd gotten, you know, I'd moved seven movement points or something like that, or six and a half, and then I went seven, eight, nine, ten to here, or whatever it is, it's ten, it's ten. However it worked out, it's ten to here. One, now I'm going to do it, it's probably going to be wrong, watch, one, one and a half, two, three, four and a half, five, six, seven, eight, nine, yeah, it's nine movement points, and I moved to here. Well... I've moved into a hex that contains the 2nd Infantry and now the 99th Infantry. Now in hindsight, maybe I didn't want to retreat the, the, the 99th to there. That may have been a poor choice of, of retreat location, but it's one of the few that would make sense. You've got to retreat three hexes. One, two, three. One, two, three. Uh, you know, there's really not, there's not a lot of other places that would have been very much safer. So it was a logical choice to put it there. So that means that 2nd Infantry and, uh, and 99th now would need to retreat an additional three hexes. These, guy moves, these guys move three hexes. And just for the time being, I am going to move, uh, let's see, one, two, three. Three. I will move these guys and I'll put them in a hex with a combat unit from the second infantry. And all of this stuff here is actually the support formations that are spread out amongst, if we look at these, uh, you can see, I'm going to change the, the zoom, I know it's actually working pretty good. Uh, you can see there's three support units. And those support units are available across all of the different uh, components of the 2nd Infantry Division. And you get to use them in various ways during the turn in either offensive or defensive manner, depending on the color of the, the number and uh, you know, whether or not it has a yellow box or red box, stuff like that. Okay. So those guys, now we're just going to put all those guys and I I've got the artillery chits here as well. I kind of got them piled up. You don't need these artillery chits. I kept them. 
like that because as you spin them, that's a good way to keep track. You just take them off and that lets you know that uh, you use them. So this looks like a big pile here, but it's not really a big pile. It's not really that big. You just put everything off to one side is what happens. And this guy has its artillery and its fatigue stuff and it's gonna go on a big old stack here as well, I guess. So, in fact, I think I'm gonna move all that off to one side because it is a little silly to have it up that high. I can all just go here. It's uh, conceptually with the headquarters, but it's considered to be attached to the various units. So if you can imagine tank destroyers are spread, spread out amongst a bunch of different battalions, and you know, there might be one uh, platoon or one squadron or two tanks per, two tank destroyers per battalion or whatever the case might be and so they're spread out okay so we moved up we did that that all worked out pretty well uh the so they the the 99th then tried to activate to kind of rectify its situation because by by being bounced like this it drops all of the prepared defenses for all of these guys so uh, i finished moving up these these finished up moving these guys a second time the 99th tried to activate. They couldn't activate because this is kind of part of the surprise turn. They just failed their role to do so. So we activated the 277th Vol uh, Vox Grenadier. They came in and attacked and forced. Uh, they also got a double activation. They forced the two units here to retreat. And, uh, you know, Bob's your uncle. We, we ended up taking, we ended up opening this up now. And when it's time, I can then, after the US have their activation, which actually they failed, they tried to activate the 106th to begin a retreat. Uh, they will probably activate the 12th SS and or, or, will, or will do Piper. Uh, I, may, I may do Piper first, we'll see. So just very briefly in a very slow, deliberate, detailed, uh, looking at many options. I would often move units up, write down what was going on, conduct the attack, and then put all the units back, look at the situation, what could I do differently, how could I do, how could I do it differently. And the reason why that's important to just kind of do that to get a feel for things is that you can move up adjacent to a unit, and if you have a red armor value like you saw there, you can conduct a fire attack or an engagement and uh, shoot at the unit and attempt to drop its support, right? That softens it up so that when you then either, you could end uh, mobile assault or shock attack with that red armor valued unit, or you could move on and do something else and fire at something else and then be finished or stopped. And then you would then move your next unit up and he would do something. He might uh, want to support an attack, so he would move up here and be adjacent. And then another chap would move up and he would perhaps conduct the attack. And that's how you, uh, now I forgot where that was, I think this was here. Um, that's how you kind of sequence things. You go, you complete all your actions with one unit and then move on to the next one. But there are many different ways you can do things. You could barrage something first and try and do a destructive barrage. You could uh, conduct a suppression attack, which is going to be used in an, uh, uh, in a, uh, uh, a combat against a specific hex, and you're using up your artillery and your uh, your support resources while you do that. So lots of different choices to be made, and it's interesting to kind of goof around with the game and see how things go, and see which way is the best way to do things. And so I did that quite a few times, and that's how I worked out that. You know, I could actually get to move this headquarters unit that was uh, over here and, and this one as well and secure this victory hex. And then what that then does is that allows me to potentially create a pretty massive pocket here and pocket most of the second infantry away from its headquarters and isolate it. And then also uh, open up a road to drive for Melmady, which is... Uh, over there, or Melmody, Melmody, depending on how you like to say it. So that's just a quick look. Uh, it's a very, probably not very interesting video. 15 minutes, wow, that's special. 
So I hope you uh, enjoyed a little summary view of what's going on. You will be able to see detailed photographs and content and write up on uh, the blow by blow of all of this that just transpired. I'll be posting that up as I write it up. It'll be sometime the next week or the week after. It'll, it'll go up online, if not sooner, depending on how much interest there is. And I will continue to post on this as long as it's gaining or garnering your interest and, uh, and keeping me entertained. I will look forward to talking to you more about this soon.